she is looking pretty pulled apart. I'm gonna take the soft side of this hammer and I guess drop the piston. Damn it. You should. <laughs> Off to a good start. I think of it as a puzzle, but if you understand how the puzzle works, you can put the puzzle together. You have to get real intimate with it. <laughs> Well, if you're wondering who these two kids are, we're Allie and Lance. And back in 2019, we built a school bus, sold our house, and traveled in it for a full year. After that year of travel, we decided we wanted to build something new and 4x4, so we bought the van. And while the end goal of the van is going to be great, it's become a job that we weren't quite expecting. About 50% of the van has been replaced, and we recently just pulled out the engine. looking pretty pulled apart. Okay, so a little project update here. We got the head off, the gasket looks absolutely terrible. There's a lot of rust. So far, the injectors look decent. I noticed pulling this apart, potential issues that could have made this run bad to begin with. One of the valves on the, there is no solenoid on this valve right now. Gonna go on a limb and say that was a big issue. I also went to the store here, got a engine rack. This is our parts corner. It's pretty messy, but it's hard, it's hard not to be, honestly. But I got this little rack here, just a plastic rack, so I can hold all my parts and keep them organized. So as I pull them off here, they go here. Here's the injectors. I have them labeled for cylinder. And then I'm keeping these head studs for right now, but I have, uh, well, I guess head bolts. I have head studs that I'm gonna be putting on when everything goes back. So we got that one cylinder off, I tilted the motor, got some more oil and gunk off of it. Now I'm going to go ahead and take these injectors out. You can do these injectors with the motor in, no problem. It's pretty, pretty easy. I believe it's injector three, cylinder three in the van you have, no, it might be six. In the van, you have to pull the solenoid off first and then you can pull the injector. To pull these out, you'll need a pry bar so you unhook all these, and then there's a ring on the back side, right where you took out that bolt. You slide that forward, and then don't grab these wires, and you can get underneath, there's a metal. Then you can kind of just pop it up. So I got the pry bar under here, and this is that little ring I was telling you about. So it sits like that in there, and it holds it down, and you have to push it forward. So we have all four injectors out here. On the sides here are your injectors, or glow plug plugs. And they just slide off the top. And that's your top wiring harness. You have to take the injectors out before you pull the heads off. We got a bigger impact. Man. on the outside of the cylinder, and then 12, I think, on the inside. So now we can just take out all of these. So I have it sitting upright like this. So that way I can just pull all these head studs out. So I'm gonna take off this front pulley. I could have probably done this before.
tiny parts. So yesterday, you flipped this upside down, right? Yep. And you're so still this just... is the bottom of the motor right now. What you're currently looking at is these are the piston rods. Your oil pan goes right here. This is your oil pickup. These are the bottom of your piston rods. And then these in here are your pistons and your cylinders. So the piston rods hold your pistons and they're connected to your crankshaft here. And so your crankshaft is connected to your transmission. And this is how, this right here is actually how your entire vehicle drives is from your crankshaft output shaft. One of these pistons will have a small explosion in them and they usually do it at like alternating times. So they'll explode and then turn this shaft and that's what makes your car go forward. So once you're revving it up, you're putting more gas or diesel in the cylinders, making more explosions so that way you can go forward more. So basically what I'm gonna do is uh, a visual inspection as well as some, I have some measuring tools that I'm gonna measure tolerances with. So I would like to not have to do a full rebuild on this motor. However, I'm noticing some rust in the bottom of this, which means there was water in the oil at some point and it probably sat for a while and that oil was, or the water was able to rust parts out. That's a little concerning because if they're on surfaces that rub against each other they could wear like prematurely so i'm gonna go ahead and take the back side of these piston rods off and there's bearings inside those that go on the crankshaft here so i'll just pull these nuts off inspect those bearings and if the bearings are shot then we'll get new bearings i already inspected the piston walls and they seem good and the pistons seem good there's not like a ton of build up on them or anything. So I'm gonna leave the pistons in cause that's a whole nother process, pulling the pistons and resetting them, doing all the rings. And there was very little blow by on this motor. So I did a lot of like pre checks while the motor was running to make sure that like, that would give me helpful tips for when I'm actually having a part. So the temperature sensor with the van worked really badly and we found the issue. The previous owner also just removed the thermostat. I'm guessing this motor had overheating issues. Luckily, I'm not seeing any signs of like serious overheating stresses or anything like that. And then we also found that some sensors were off. The IPR valve it's called, um, which basically runs this motor. It, was not operational, that was completely off. So that probably was the number one reason this thing had a rough time running and starting. I don't regret pulling this out and taking it apart because I'm finding a lot of useful things that would be an issue in the future. So this is basically just making sure this is gonna run because chances are if we end up taking this vehicle to South America or Europe, we're not gonna be able to find parts for this. We'd have to get them shipped in. So these are the high pressure oil pump hoses and you can see they're starting to dry rot pretty bad. Um, dry rot is rubber just gets too hard and then it starts to split. Now these are steel braided. Oh, this is not a steel braided hose, but you can see how close this hose was to giving out and this would be a catastrophic failure and your motor would stop running for sure. And these hoses hold that like a at least 500 PSI in them. So yesterday I ran to the store and got a couple specialty tools. I got a universal puller here. So this is just a universal puller kit. Um, and I need that for some pulleys. I haven't ha needed it yet, so we'll see. Maybe I'll end up returning that. And then this is basically a, a brush kit, so that way you can get in all of the crevices. And then here we have a valve compressor. So this is for checking the valves on the head. So I believe this motor was rebuilt at some point. I can see signs of it, like honing marks and things like that. So I don't think it needs a full, full rebuild. And plus that costs a lot more and it takes a lot more time. And local machine shop is like a month out till we can get this motor in. There's another tool that I got to check measurements. This stand here, I can set at a height and then I can swipe this across a surface or move a, like a pulley around and check for balance. You can see it, the little needle there tests for height and it's very, very uh, 
sensitive, so like just pressing down on the table moves it. And I have a manual here that tells me all the balancing parameters and tolerances, so I can just check the tolerances and ensure that nothing overheated and got out of whack or someone installed it incorrectly or a bolt backed off or something like that. Welcome back to the lab. We started to pull the rods out. Well, the back of the rods, the rod, rod caps, I guess you'd call them. So that way we can check the bearings. Now these are the bearings here. I'll show you. This is how they look. And this one's not too bad, but you can see scratches on the inside, which is not good. As far as my manual goes and what I've been looking up, these should be look brand new and then the back sides are even worse. So I think what we're gonna end up doing is ordering an entire new like rebuild kit. So I'm just pulling off the rods. You pull these guys off and those bearings that I was, I was showing you are right underneath these here. Um, as you can see, they're empty here. And this is your uh, crankshaft here that we're looking at, which is pretty exciting to see. We'll pull this off and then I'll pop that piston out and give you a, a better look. Here's how I like to get those off. So I leave the nuts on just enough so we're not rounding anything over. So this is that rod bearing, so let me show you. You can see on this one, it comes just like this. You can see the abnormalities in color here. Then we can just pull the bearing apart like this and you can see underneath and it does not look very healthy. And it smells kind of burnt, which means we could have spun a rod at some point. I have this labeled, so we have, I just did it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I just have a little five on this cardboard and I set that there. Take my fingers and just kind of push it down and then examine it. And the main reason why I'm just pulling these out is just to look at them. And um, in looking at them, I have decided that they are bad. And while I'm deep in this motor, I just want it. I want to fix everything so I don't have to do it again. The nice thing is this uh, crankshaft here is in perfect condition. There's no heat marks, no abnormal wear or anything, which is really nice. And I think it's supposed to be like that because, you know, these in theory should be a softer material um, and they should take the, the brute force of things. We're going to probably just start pulling some pistons out. So I just right on the top of the uh, crankshaft here. I just have a wrench and that's how I'm moving this. I'm gonna take the soft side of this, put it on there, hammer, and I guess drop the piston. Damn it. So we're for sure getting new ones now? I think so. It's actually not damaged in a bad spot. So here's your piston. This is what a piston looks like. I'm sure you've seen this on like a t-shirt or something. Now what makes this specific for diesels is this giant cup here. This is so it has more compression. A lot of gas motors are flat or will have a slight uh, like hemisphere on them or like a design type deal. We can see scoring under there. It's not the worst thing ever, but it's not the best. On one side, there's a chamfer here, which a chamfer is kind of like a 45 degree cut. You can see, and you can see how this side here is less than this side. That's very important. The side that's most chamfered is gonna face the walls. So like this side here uh, is much more chamfered. So that will sit on this side towards the inside wall. So we wanna torque this to spec so that way we can get accurate measurements with all the metal depressed because metal does move, flexes quite a bit. So you need to make sure you're, you have everything down. So we wanna to go to 52 foot pounds, then 80 foot pounds. I just got a standard wrench and I'm just gonna get these tight enough. Um, so I just tighten those down. They're probably like 20 foot pounds right now. Not very tight. We got our torque, torque bar here. And we're gonna set it at, let me check, 52. So this is gonna be kinda of awkward cause it's not attached to anything. So let's see if I can utilize this, our table here. I'm gonna 
just go reverse here just for fun. Now why that matters is because when you measure the inside of that. So this isn't the exact correct way to do this. You really want, they have like specific tools to find the inside of circles. I couldn't find the one of those locally. So I just have my caliper here and I kind of just went around and found the, like as you can see, it's scraping all the way around. I found the hardest or like the biggest point possible. So I have this set now. And now what we're gonna do is take some a outer dimension micrometer set these and go over to the crankshaft here. Well, probably just do this one here, the highest up one. So as far as I understand, what we're gonna do is just get this, open it all nice and up, and we want it where the weight of the micrometer is making it fall down. I think that's pretty much it right there. So we'll lock that in. Now we have some readings here that we can uh, go off of. Now I need to just take these readings off and make sure this is the, well, not make sure, but see if this is the factory setting or if these have been machined down any. And then that'll determine which um, bearings I order. She's looking pretty. Pretty much everything stripped off besides the cam crank and uh, cam rollers inside here. That's what these plates are for. I took a look at the cam rollers. I think that's what they're called. And anyways, uh, they look fine. So I'm just put them back in look and let them sit there. We're gonna do a final clean of this block. I'm not sure if I'll take it to the car wash and pressure wash it or not. Um, at this point, anything that touches the inside needs to be instantly wiped off as far as moisture goes because we don't want any surface rust in here. I mean, you can see based on all the oil on this how much it's been leaking out of different areas. Um, we have pretty much all the parts laid out. The pistons look really sweet up there, I think. <laughs> I mean, that shelf's practically built for a 7.3. That's crazy that that many things make this motor run make the motor run and fit in that tiny spot yeah well there's a lot there's more on that table more outside there's a lot of a lot of stuff that goes into it i think of it as a puzzle but if you understand how the puzzle works you can put the puzzle together you have to get real intimate with it <laughs> Pistons, head, H-pop, injectors, heat exchanger, valve covers, head studs, push rods, H-pop hose, exhaust manifold, pulley assembly, oil pickup, torque converter, water pump, and fan, block. And seat. So one of the things that's been really helping is this book here. It is a Ford 7.3 DI turbo diesel for a 94, but it works for our motor, which is a 95. It has every torque spec, every dimension, so I can check all dimensions to see if it's machined or not or anything and it tells me how to reassemble and take apart everything and how to torque things down in what order what spec how to adjust valves basically everything and it is super useful just to reference i mean i'm not following this book religiously but i mean you could it's almost like an instruction manual on how to take it apart how to put it back together which is super cool imagine the job of writing that book Right? <laughs> well, imagine the job of making the motor. <laughs> <laughs> True. Allie is performing a head rebuild to the part Cindy Majigger today. We're gonna start. We need to take off all of these rockers. These are called rockers here. Okay. And we probably just want to leave them in the same place. So when we take them off, we'll set them in order. So not rather than a pile. And then we'll for sure clean these off before they go back in. Get all that little rusty rust off. Aren't supposed to use chromes on impacts, but I don't care, I'm a rebel. You should. <laughs> off to a good start. <laughs> Now this is a universal valve puller. So what we do, you clamp it on and it grabs onto those springs there. And then you... It's like a wine bottle opener. Right. Here are valves and our valve springs right down here. So they sit like this right here. And then we have these little valve collars that basically 
they have a groove in there and they hold on so the springs can't come off. And so what we're doing is compressing these springs enough so we can press them down enough to get these collars off. And why we're doing that is because, well, one, you can see like there's crud on it, more on this one than the other. So we're gonna clean all that crud off. But the main thing we're looking at is the lip around here to see if it's still in good condition, if it can seat properly. So I need to look at the manual to see uh, tolerances and all that. And then we will uh, check everything, clean them up, and then just reassemble it. And we have this block and the other block to do. So you saw me cranking it by hand, I got tired of that. So I took that little handle off here and I ground some points in it so I could put a 15 mil on here and just use it like a socket. Now I don't have to uh, do it by hand, which I'd much rather prefer not doing. Oh, and the rattling of that also seems to loosen these up, which is kind of cool. So these are definitely intake and exhaust sides, so they're very they're specific. So you have to make sure you're actually keeping track of these. Since I'm not replacing them and not remachining anything, I don't want to mix them up in case over their lifetime they wore slightly different. Is these are called your rocker arms. And basically we have a push rod that goes right through, I believe it's this hole. Nope. It's up here. So it sits on top of the valve like this with that spring and you have a cam on the inside of the motor. And the cam kind of looks like a shaft with a bunch of eggs sticking out the sides. And what those eggs are doing is as they're rolling, they're set in very specific order. So that way it pushes this push rod up, causing this rocker arm to rock and pushing your valve down, and then the spring is causing it to close back. What this is basically doing is causing you have an exhaust and an intake side. So intake, it opens so air can rush in, closes, the explosion on the, in the cylinder happens, and then your exhaust side opens so you can let the exhaust out. And that actually happens in four strokes, so four piston strokes. So you can see it's kind of dirty. I sprayed them and let them soak with some degreaser. So I just give them a, a little initial scrub. These are directional and how I kept them in order here was important. So rather than marking them and I don't know how you'd mark them and then clean them and all that. So what I do instead is I know that the ball bearing sits this way and we're doing this cylinder here. So then I can just take the ball, set it right in there, and then just set that on there. And the ring just clips in there basically to hold that on. And then you can set that there. And now we have every rocker in place facing the correct direction and back in order. Now, I don't think Ali's parents would really like if I put this in the dishwasher, which I have seen people do. <laughs> so I'm gonna scrub it just like I've done everything else. just cleaning this we'll spare you the gunk we want to say thank you to all of the viewers and honestly we're just super happy that a lot of you guys are interested in what we're doing that's why we're sharing it because uh, it is interesting and different stuff so if you want to see more make sure to subscribe make sure to like make sure to comment yeah comment tell me how I did this wrong or how I did this right or <laughs> I'm not sure I'm just doing it how I think I should do it I'm sure I'm doing quite a few things wrong, but thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, getting dirty with me and trying to get a van motor running again. Running good. Running good. Running better than ever. <laughs>